Hello everyone, this is Paleo Nerd back with a brand new scientific analysis video. This time of the ninth episode of Jurassic Fight Club, Ice Age Monsters, which takes place in Wyoming 10,000 years ago during the Tarantian Age of the Pleistocene Epoch, and features a fight between an American lion and a short-faced bear. This is, this is the second and final episode in the series to take place in the Cenozoic era and as such does not feature any dinosaurs. Instead, it focuses on the end of the last ice age during the Quaternary Extinction Event in which much of Earth's megafauna went extinct, although in this episode it is really only used to justify a lion fighting a bear. Anyway, not having any dinosaurs in it worked well in the favor of deep sea killers, so you might think it works just as well for this one. And that is where you would be wrong. So, right off the bat, both animals featured are believed to have gone extinct around 11,000 years ago, a thousand years before the episode takes place. So, there's an inaccuracy right off the bat. Chances are they simply rounded down the date to make it simpler, so we'll assume a date of around 12,000 to 11,000 years ago, just for simplicity's sake. Now to the combatants. First we have Panthera atrox, commonly referred to as the American lion, which is an extinct cat in the Panthera genus, closely related to the modern lion as well as the extinct Eurasian cave lion. Its scientific name means Fearsome Panther, and it lived in North America during the Pleistocene Epoch, about 340,000 to 11,000 years ago. It is about 25% larger than the African lion, at a length of about 1.5 to 2.5 meters, or 5 to 8 feet in length, a height of over 1 meter or 4 feet high at the shoulder, and a weight of around 235 to 523 kilograms or 500 to 1,000 pounds for males and 175 to 365 kilograms or 800, 380 to 800 pounds for females, making it the second largest predator in North America at the time, second only to the short-faced bear. It is known from over 80 individuals, mainly recovered from the famous La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, so a lot is known about it. We even have a pretty good idea of what color the animal was, based on preserved skin and cave paintings made by humans. Like its modern day cousin, the American lion preferred open habitats like savannas and grasslands, and luckily, Pleistocene North America was perfect for its needs. Although it was likely not as social as their modern cousins, the American lion was no doubt a successful predator, preying on the many large herbivores that roamed North America at the time, like mammoths, horses, camels, tapirs, and especially bison, which seemed to be the preferred prey for these cats. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you see it, the American lion went extinct along with the other Pleistocene megafauna around 11,000 years ago during the Quaternary Extinction Event, which is commonly believed by many to have been caused by a mixture of climate change and overhunting by humans. In terms of size, the Jurassic Fight Club version is too long, at a length of 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters long, and it is slightly taller at 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder, although the weight is accurate at around 700 pounds or about 120 kilograms. The design very closely matches what we know the American lion looked like, which is understandable as it is pretty hard to screw up the design for a cat. They even give it a bit of a mane, which male American lions might have had, although nowhere as big as those on their modern relatives. The only problem I can see is it has a weird bobblehead thing going on. It's really weird. It like it just looks like somebody zap like shot a growth ray at a lion cub, and and that was that was the animal. 
Could just be the angle, but to me it just looks off. Next we have Arctodus simos, the greater short-faced bear, an extinct species of bear that lived during the Pleistocene from 800,000 to 11,000 years ago. It belongs in the family Tremarctinae, of which the spectacled bear of South America is the only surviving member. Arctodus is considered among the largest carnivorous animals to ever walk the earth, as individuals frequently reached weights of over a ton. It is also estimated to reach a length of about 2 meters or 6 feet long, and could look a grown man in the eye on all fours. Reared up on its hind legs, this animal is estimated to tower at a height of 3.4 to 3.7 meters or 11 to 12 feet tall with a 4.3 meter or 14 foot vertical arm reach. A bear this large was most definitely a walking nightmare for anything unfortunate enough to cross its path. Its jaws could easily snap bones in two and one swipe of those massive arms would be enough to decapitate a grown man. The exact diet of Arctodus has been somewhat controversial, as many suggested that it was a super predator hunting whatever it wanted, while others have suggested it was a pure scavenger, using its massive size to scare smaller predators away from their kills. However, recent analysis has pretty much killed the scavenger theory for Arctodus, as a 2013 study of the wear of the teeth of several extinct and extant bears showed that Arctodus actually scavenged less than polar bears do, which is not a lot. Instead, Arctodus was probably an opp opportunistic omnivore like modern brown bears. This pretty much means that Arctodus ate whatever was available, plants and animals alike. This in no way means that it didn't hunt live prey and a mastodon arm bone with tooth marks matching that of the short-faced bear indicate that it may have been capable of tackling very large game, although the bite marks may also be the result of scavenging as well. In fact, that's probably more likely. Still, chances are that very few animals could or would want to stand up to this colossus of a bear. Unlike the lion, which was slightly oversized, the short-faced bear is way oversized. It's put at a length of 15 feet or 4.5 meters long, when the real animal only reached lengths of about 6 feet or 2 meters long. It is also put at a height of 12 feet or 3.6 meters tall at the shoulder on all fours. That's over twice the height of the actual animal on all fours. Although that height is right for the bear in a bipedal stance, so this was likely a mistake of some kind. The bear is also put in as weighing 2,500 pounds or over 1,100 kilograms, which is possible for, but only for incredibly large individuals. Once again, not the average size of a bear. Jurassic Fight Club's design for the short-faced bear is not nearly as inaccurate as the designs for the dinosaurs, since it is quite difficult to screw up the design for a bear. The basic skeletal design is pretty spot on, although Jurassic Fight Club took the short-faced thing a bit too far. In fact, the entire head looks way too small, almost the reverse of the bobblehead lion it fights against. Weird. Finally, the bear seems a bit lacking in fur, especially during the Ice Age. While it certainly wouldn't be a big mound of fur, it would be nice to have enough fur so that I can't see the bear's ribs. There are some other inaccuracies as well besides its appearance. First, the show claims that Arctodus was likely an endurance runner due to its long legs. While this was once considered the case, it is now known that Arctodus actually did not have very long legs for its size. It's only an illusion caused by its relatively short back which makes the legs look longer. In addition, it was very poorly built as a long distance runner due to the lack of a long tail that most pursuit predators use to turn quickly, 
as well as its sheer mass being a severe handicap. Also, the show says that Arctodus ventured into South America when it collided with North America. However, the farthest south that Arctodus lived was Central Mexico. There is actually a larger short-faced bear called Arctotherium, which did live in South America, but since Arctodus is clearly the one the show was referring to, it will be counted as an inaccuracy. Anyway, let's see how the fight holds up. The fight begins with an American lion feeding on a dead bison, as George and the narrator explain the severe climate change that's causing the extinction of the Pleistocene megafauna. Soaring temperatures top 90 degrees on the plains. Extinction is enveloping Earth. Few large plant eaters are left. We're coming to the end of the Pleistocene, the end of the Ice Age. The environments are changing and animals are pretty stressed. This is pretty much on par with the Quaternary Extinction event, which occurred around this time. Although the show frequently ignores the human factor of this extinction. In fact, I don't think humans are mentioned at all in the entire episode when it comes to the cause of this mass extinction. Even though most paleontologists agree that humans probably played a big role in the extinction of Earth's megafauna. It's kind of our thing. Next, we have the bison the lion is feeding on. Yeah, you thought the pterosaur was getting nitpicky. Based on the time period and location, as well as its size compared to the lion, the bison is probably Bison Antiquus, or the ancient bison, which is believed to be the ancestor of the modern American bison. However, there is a problem. George says that the bison happened to wander close enough for the, to the lion for it to make a kill. He's been very lucky that a bison wandered in close enough for him to attack, and he made a kill. And in the flashback, yes, there's a flashback, the bison is shown to be alone. However, if modern American bison are anything to go by, then bison antiquus was probably a herd animal. Although males tend to leave their maternal herds when they reach sexual maturity, they will often group with other males, and some female herds have been observed with older males. With that in mind, combined with the fact that bison were everywhere during this time, it seems very unlikely that the lion would just happen to find a bison all by itself, although it is possible that this is a solitary male. Again though, that's pretty unlikely since bison were very, very common during this time, since humans weren't able to really hunt them to extinction yet. Finally, the actual flashback, which shows the lion killing the bison. For the most part, the flashback is pretty accurate in terms of how the American lion probably hunted. However, one problem is that the flashback has the lion roaring at the top of his lungs while he's sneaking up on the bison. Its coloring matches the brush. It moves silently on padded feet and is able to remain completely motionless for hours. Meaning he must have gotten very lucky and picked a bison that just so happened to be completely deaf. In which case that'd be a freaking miracle that it managed to live very long with such a crippling disability. Keep in mind, this is all within the first minute of the fight. Anyway, it isn't long before a short-faced bear arrives on the scene, having caught the scent of the bison. The bear then sneaks up on the lion by traveling downwind before he lunges out roaring at the top of his lungs to try and scare the lion from the kill. Now, in real life, this would absolutely work in the bear's favor. The lion would in no way want to even try and fight for his kill. The bear is just too powerful and the lion would have no chance of winning. So the lion would be better off running away. But, of course, since this is Jurassic Fight Club, there has to be a fight. And George talks about how the lion can't afford to abandon his meal because he's starving. Even though, again, bison were really common at this time, and chances are there's more, like, 20 feet away. 
So the lion, very stupidly, stands his ground against the bear, and the narrator states a useless fact about how the short-faced bear doesn't need to hibernate. Bears in our own time are designed to hibernate. In the Ice Age, there were no seasonal weather changes. The mega bear ate the same amount year-round, giving it an insatiable need to hunt. Which is also false, since contrary to what the narrator says, there were seasonal weather changes during the last Ice Age. In retaliation to the lion standing his ground, not the useless fact, the bear rears up on his hind legs to try and scare the lion off. But instead, the lion lunges at the bear's exposed stomach, knocking him over. However, the lion doesn't react quickly enough to attack the vulnerable underbelly and instead clamps his jaws on the back of the bear's neck where the bear's fat reserves prevent any major damage. The bear is e easily able to shake the lion off who in turn attempts to get the bear to rear up again. However, the bear doesn't rear up. Instead, it charges at the lion and swats it to the ground with its arms. Given how powerful those arms are, that probably should have snapped the lion's neck at the least and ripped its head clean off its shoulders at the very most. But instead, the lion isn't even knocked unconscious. So, either that's one strong-ass lion or one weak-ass bear. I'll let you decide, because I think I already have. Then, the narrator claims that the American lion's skull is thicker than a modern lion's, and easily able to take a shovel to the head and recover quickly. The mega lion's skull is much thicker than the modern lion. It could absorb a blow from a shovel to the head and quickly recover. While the first statement is true, the second one is doubtful. Although I suggest that no one go and hit a lion with a shovel to find out. Anyway, the lion recovers quickly from what should be a fatal blow, and the two combatants are in a standoff, each one trying to get the other to walk away. Meanwhile, the narrator says that the American lion would get its niche replaced with the cougar and the leopard. With the temperature rising, the mega lion would ultimately be replaced by the much smaller cougar and leopard. However, the leopard is exclusive to Africa and Asia. And while fossil remains suggest that leopards once existed in Europe and Japan, leopards have never inhabited North America. The narrator clearly means the jaguar, which is exclusive to the Americas and looks similar to the leopard, but is much larger, more heavily built, and its spots look slightly different. Anyway, the lion grows desperate and begins to swat at the bear's face, but the bear retaliates by throwing the lion to the ground and pinning it with its arms. While this is happening, the narrator claims that bears are capable of using wrestling moves in a fight, which is absolutely ridiculous. The mega bear will actually use wrestling moves in a fight, including trying to pin an opponent. With his opponent completely subdued, the bear decides to finish off his opponent by Biting a small chunk out of the lion's abdomen, rather than just going for the neck. I'm starting to believe that both these guys are idiots. Not just the lion. <laughs> Believing that the lion is down for good, rather stupidly, the short-faced bear heads to the bison and begins to feed. Just in case you forgot, this whole fight is over one measly bison carcass. However, the fight is not over as the lion quickly recovers yet again and pounces on the distracted bear, knocking it to the ground. Once again, the lion fails to go for the throat while the bear is unconscious and waits until the bear is able to defend itself before attacking again. This is one very polite lion for someone who wants to win the fight. The lion is thrown off, and as he gets up again, probably the most unintentionally hilarious thing in the entire show happens. 
The lion is in excruciating pain from the force of the bear's throw, but he won't give up. Oh, they really just did that. That is fucking hilarious. And also completely ridiculous. Anyway, the lion roars loudly, which apparently now means that the fight is to the death. And as the bear charges forward, the lion dodges and whacks the bear in the head, causing it to fall over like he's in a freaking Tom and Jerry cartoon. Once again, the lion misses his chance to end the fight while his opponent's down, but once the bear recovers and is back on his feet, the lion launches his final assault. He lunges forward, forcing the bear backwards, and the lion grabs the throat. The narrator then claims that the American lion would need to eat 40 pounds or 18 kilograms of meat a day just to survive. The lion needed almost 40 pounds of meat a day to survive. But that is just ridiculous. The modern African lion only needs about 10 to 15 pounds or 4 to 7 kilos of meat a day and the much larger short-faced bear would have only needed about 35 pounds or 16 kilos of meat. Since the American lion is only slightly bigger than the modern lion, a better estimate would be about 12 to 20 pounds or 5 to 10 kilos per day. It almost seems like the lion has won until the bear regains his footing and throws the lion towards a nearby cave where the lion falls to his death. Um, what? Where the hell did that cave come from? All throughout the fight, we get all these wide shots and we get this great big look at the landscape, but the cave is not seen or brought up in the fight until now. Pretty much the only reason the cave is even in this fight is because this fight is indeed supposedly based on a real fossil discovery, but once again, butchered beyond belief. Now, there is one more inaccuracy to cover before we address that discovery and what the show got wrong. That inaccuracy is the show's depiction of the Quaternary Mass Extinction Event, which wiped out most of Earth's megafauna. As I stated before, the show makes no mention of the role of humans in the extinction, even though humans were definitely at least partially involved. The show also seems to imply that the extinction was caused by the earth just heating up and all the animals overheated and died, but that was not the case at all. This was especially not the case for the American lion or the short-faced bear, which have been found in Florida and central Mexico respectively, both of which were quite warm at the time. The most likely reason these two predators went extinct is probably due to the loss of major prey items and competition with human hunters. The American lion might have even been hunted to extinction by humans, as bones of the animal have been found in the trash heaps of early Native Americans, suggesting that humans may have even hunted and eaten lions. Basically, it's likely that climate change was not the primary factor of the quaternary extinction, and that the arrival of humans in North America likely had a direct negative impact on the megafauna living there. Now let's move on to what really happened. As stated before, this fight is indeed based off a real fossil site, that being the natural trap cave in Wyoming, which includes many more fossils than just an American lion and short-faced bear. In fact, the cave contains practically an entire ecosystem, from small animals like deer mice, bulls, chipmunks, and rabbits, to larger animals like wolves, foxes, wolverines, horses, camels, deer, pronghorns, bison, bighorn sheep, mammoths, and American cheetahs. In case you haven't figured it out by now, the real story of how these animals ended up in the cave is way different from how Jurassic Fight Club portrays it. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that the producers didn't include other animals from the cave in the fight like mammoths, American cheetahs, bison, wolverines, camels, and horses. Just to have a big old bloodiest battle style massacre. I'm glad that didn't happen. I'm just 
surprised it didn't. But that doesn't so justify the fight that we actually got. I would love to see what was going through the producers' heads when they were coming up with how to depict this fossil discovery. Hmm, let's see. An American lion and a shirt-faced bear both died in the same cave, as well as a bunch of other animals that aren't as cool. I think what happened is that the, uh, that the two were fighting over a bison. And during the fight, the bear just fucking yeets the lion into the cave. And the bear ends up in the cave later because of reasons. As for the how the other animals got there, eh, fuck up. Nobody cares about a whole bunch of rabbits and deer and shit. So, what really happened? Well, it's quite simple. Some animals fall into the cave, their death cries attract predators, which in turn also fell into the cave. Then, more prey would fall in, luring in more predators and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much it. The American lion and shore-faced bear probably both ended up there due to being attracted by the corpses and just fell to their deaths trying to eat the carcasses. The idea that the two animals were fighting each other and one just happened to throw one into the pit makes zero sense and feels like something out of a cartoon. Besides, the show never really explains how the bear ended up there in a satisfying way. It just goes, oh, and by the way, the bear fell in there too. And perhaps the biggest amount of evidence is that neither animal showed any signs of injury. Yeah, you kind of screwed up there, didn't you, show writers? To my knowledge, not a single animal in the entire cave showed any signs of injury that could have come from another animal, and any injuries that were found were likely caused by falling a whole 85 feet or 26 meters. And yes, I looked it up, and the show is correct in the fact that the cave is over 80 feet deep. The cave is over 85 feet deep. A deadly drop. Anyway, the complete lack of any injuries related to being attacked by another animal in the entire cave pretty much means that the entire fight is bullshit because it never happened. Of course, pretty much every other fight in the series so far never happened to a certain extent, but this fight in particular is very, very offensive in that regard. That's pretty much it for what really happened. But like what I did with my Deep Sea Killers video, I would like to briefly resurrect how to make it better. Since an American lion would never fight a shore-faced bear in a million years, a much better opponent for the American lion would probably be either the saber-toothed cat Smilodon Fatalis, or the scimitar-toothed cat Homotherium Serum. Like Leviathan vs. Megalodon, a fight between an American lion and either Smilodon or Homotherium could reasonably go either way, but regardless of the victor, the result would probably not be death for either combatant. Overall, I'd say that this episode is absolutely the worst of the Cenozoic episodes, and it definitely rivals Bloodiest Battle for the title of the worst and most awesome bro episode of the entire series and might even surpass it. I actually have a difficult time finding anything good to say about this episode. It's that bad. Maybe it's just that Cenozoic animals are harder to portray inaccurately because we know more about them, which suggests that Jurassic Fight Club did so deliberately. And frankly, the fact that one show would have the audacity to deliberately misinform its audience about prehistoric life, which is already victim to misinformation, just grinds my gears. Of course, there's more episodes in this show to analyze, and I just have to say I'm glad that I'm nearly done with this. That's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Up next will be the Mapusaurus creature profile, followed by the analysis of the next episode, River of Death. 
I hope you all enjoyed today's video and that you learned something new. Thank you all for watching, and this is PaleoNerd signing out.